What's up everyone, this is JT Curtis. Um, so we're gearing up to get ready to work on the history of rock, the 90s. And to do something a little different, I thought maybe uh, we'd do a series of vlogs or um, like behind the scenes kind of thing just to show the process and making these videos. And um, of course this all starts with the writing. Generally speaking, the songs, albums, and artists make up the foundation of the script with any commentary, jokes, or storyline being built around that template. Usually, first thing I do is um, pull up a script. I'll just immediately start talking about bands that come to mind. For example, uh, like Nirvana. That just comes to mind right away. Uh, and for Nirvana, we're going to be talking about Nevermind. Uh, Nevermind uh, probably is the most famous rock album to come out of this decade. I might mention In Utero or Unplugged and stuff, but for now I'm just gonna put that and since we're talking about the Seattle scene, I'm also going to mention Pearl Jam, uh, 10 will be the album we talk about, uh, Soundgarden, of course. Um, I will definitely talk about Super Unknown. Super Unknown, um, it's a pretty special album. So, um, And the other, of, of the big four uh, Seattle bands, we've also got Alice in Chains, Dirt, that pretty much covers that. So all of this is pretty much coming off of my head, and obviously I'm going to fill in the commentary later also Candlebox. And an interesting thing about Candlebox is I actually know a lot of those guys. Adam Curry, who was in Seventh Son, actually is now their bass player. So it's pretty cool that, you know, I'm pretty friendly with uh, these guys who are part of uh, rock history. There's all the other, like, grunge bands that weren't from Seattle, Stone Temple Pilots. As for what I'm going to showcase from Stone Temple Pilots, I'm not quite sure yet. It'll probably be from the Purple Album, might be from Core. Um, they got a great body of work, so uh, there's a lot you can talk about, but I can't talk about it all. Um, also, L7, I'll probably talk about Pretend We're Dead. Butch Vig also did. Uh, Butch Vig, that's uh, another person I should talk about. Big in the production world. That's the grunge stuff right away, but there's obviously so much more. Uh, probably one of the big albums we gotta talk about is from Metallica, and that is the Black Album. And while we're at it, we'll also discuss uh, Megadeth. And I know Nick's big on both of these bands, so I'll definitely check in with him about them. I was getting into heavy metal and just all-around rock around my like second year of high school, mostly from K-Rock. Also, what was being documented on Behind the Music on VH1, where they talked about Metallica and Ozzy Osbourne and Megadeth. All good stuff. The punk scene, I mean, you gotta talk about Green Day, Dookie, that's that's the big one. And while we're talking about Green Day, we'll also discuss Weezer. Probably go with the, the Blue Album. I think Nick and I actually had a pretty good idea of uh, doing something with Say It Ain't So. There's been a lot of ideas Nick and I have been talking about since the beginning. Like, we always knew we were going to have an argument over the 80s, and while we were finishing up the 70s video, we thought it'd be funny if we got so heated we ended up having a fight scene at the end of the video. That was a lot of fun to shoot, but it was a big production. The whole video was, really. For the first half of that 80s video, uh, this this was before I moved, we shot the fight scene, we shot the opening, and the other half was uh, after I moved and I had to come in on a Tuesday. We were gonna try and finish it on the second day of filming, but I had to catch my train and the, so we had to hold it off till the next following week. So we've been talking about the 90s video being a sort of back to basics vibe, which really fits in line with what the decade was about. And then of course, as you get into the decade, we're gonna be talking about Blink-182. Now that I'm thinking about it, uh, What's My Age Again was a song that everybody in middle school was trying to play. I was, I've been playing guitar by that point for a while, and everybody was trying to play it, and I could actually play it, I just didn't really care. <laughs> So as you can see, we're starting to get a list together here. I got to think about a whole bunch of other things. Um, uh, Melissa Etheridge, that comes to mind. Uh, I guess come to my window or something like that. Sometimes deciding which song to use will be based on what the subject matter is, or even just what footage we have available. Maybe we have a clip of come to my window, maybe we have a clip of I'm the only one. Um, so it all just depends. Oh, Alanis, uh, I gotta talk about Alanis. I don't know if, uh, technically this counts as rock and roll, it's kind of, it was a, I mean, Jack Little Pill was a pop album, but you ought to know, it's pretty hard rocking, so I don't think anybody's gonna happen. Uh, Foo Fighters, they just came to mind. You see how this happens, where it's all just kinda 
my memories is jogging me. My, as, as my dad used to say, it's happening. Wait a minute, it's happening. My whole head is happening. We were fortunate to have my dad as the director for the first episodes, uh, not just for his background in film and TV, but because he grew up listening to the music of the 50s and 60s. Hey, do you want me to talk about Woodstock or not? Uh, yeah, fine, I'm sorry. Were you there? No, I was not there. Wait a minute. I think I saw you there. You've aged very well. Even when he was suffering from ALS, I made sure to get his opinions on the 70s and 80s, especially the story about him being interviewed as the sixth VJ for MTV. I didn't get the job. He always had an interesting story to relate to me about when he used to work on Disaster Peace Theater. It was difficult moving forward without him behind the camera. There was a rocky transitional period, but it is interesting to note that this is the decade that Nick and I grew up listening to. And actually, I think it was Nick who said, I think the 90s video is gonna be the best one yet, and there's certainly plenty of nostalgia to go off of this decade. While I'm at it, we're also gonna go with Incubus, Make Yourself. You can't leave out Third Eyed Blind. So I'm trying to think, uh, you know, the early parts will be, um, what is that? She's My Cherry Pie, which I'll probably talk about because that's kind of the very beginning of the 90s going into it. And then um, uh, More Than Words by Extreme. Eventually I'm going to format it so that it makes sense. Like anything that involves grunge, that will go in its own little section. Uh, the punk movement, that will go in its own section. So I've got a pretty good list here so far. There's obviously going to be a lot more. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll go into my iTunes. I have a pretty extensive uh, list of tunes here. Obviously I got a ton of Nevermind, a ton of Pearl Jam. Uh, Pearl... Oh, of course! How can I leave out the Red Hot Chili Peppers? You would share sex magic. That, you see how that works. It's just, uh... Um, oh, of course, the Smashing Pumpkins. How can you leave out the Smashing Pumpkins? And, uh, with the Smashing Pumpkins, um, you could talk about Gish, you could talk about the Siamese Dream. I'd probably talk about Melancholy, because that's just me, but, you know, I think I'm gonna leave that blank for now. Now, the next thing that, uh, I will go in trying to piece together all of the artists is I will actually go on my video. And I, because I asked, uh, what 90s band should we talk about next? And, fortunately, a lot of you, uh, wrote some great comments. Centurion right here, I apologize if I said that correctly, had a great list. I mean, this is everything right here. I mean, I've already, Nirvana, Chili Peppers, Soundgarden, but No Doubt, great, Let, let's put No Doubt in there. And of course, the good No Doubt, R.E.M., you gotta mention R.E.M., Blur. Now, Blur, I actually don't know a whole lot about Blur. I feel like, um, if I don't know a whole lot about an artist or a band or a, um, a song, that's when I'll start doing my research. Um, a lot of these bands I just already know because I grew up with them or I've seen documentaries I have. Like, for example, I've got The Making of Nevermind right here. Uh, I had actually made a video about this. We're also going to talk about Radiohead, and I specifically want to talk about OK Computer. A lot of times I really want to sit down with these albums. So I'll... For the 90s, I prefer listening to them on CD because that was the format they were tailor-made for at the time. And you can see I have a huge collection of these. For any albums I don't have, I like to get them out of the library. Uh, sitting down and listening to them really helps me understand from my own personal perspective, not just, well, this is what this person says about this song, this is what that, that person says about an album. Oh, corn. Yeah, I gotta say, um, Centurion, you really gave me a good list here. Jimmy Eat World. Well, Jimmy Eat World, Jimmy Eat World to me, I would probably save to the 2000s because The Middle, that came out in the 2000s, and that would be the one I would highlight, so I'm probably gonna save that. Uh, oh, freaking Rage Against the Machine. How can I forget Rage Against the Machine? That That is just, no, we are not forgetting Rage, Rage in the Machine. Rage Against the Machine. It, you see what a great typist I am. I would have been a great typist for a company, wouldn't I have? Anyway, I mean, I'll go through this uh, a lot more extensively. Once all of this is in place, I will then get Nick on with a Skype conversation or just call him on the phone. And we discuss, like, uh, what, other, what other songs should we talk about, what stuff should we play, jokes to put in in the first draft. Yeah, I will still get comments on the 50s video where people go, I would much rather you just talk about the songs and not have all the humor. We actually have a lot of fun with the jokes. That's when it becomes fun for us. If it was just talking heads, I just I feel like that would be boring. And sometimes I will even uh, just leave a big blank space 
and say improvise and Nick will come up with something on the spot. Most of my stuff I either make up on the spot on the day of filming or I have like an idea of what joke I want to do for that particular episode. But it really does all start off with that. So, uh, so far I got a list going. I'm probably going to add more in. I'm going to finish up writing this list here. I'm going to send it to Nick and we'll, we'll see what happens with that. Um, so, uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm planning on doing maybe a couple of other videos. I also have a video up right now of a, a music video that I just put out called Sweet Raven. If you guys can check it out, leave a comment, and, uh, you know, share it with your friends, I definitely appreciate it. I thank you guys for watching us so far. If you have any questions, like, uh, what do you guys do about this, what do you, you know, feel free to comment below, and, uh, we'll talk to you all soon. Bye.